Ridge family. We're so glad to have you at worship today. Good morning, Ridge. So happy to be worshiping with you today. Even though we cannot all be together at church, we are all together in spirit. Many thanks to our pastors and our staff for bringing this service to us each week. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye. Good morning. I miss everyone and I hope we will be together soon. Have a great day. And happy Father's Day to all the men. Okay, hi, I'm Bill Yost. This is Maria. You've seen us around. Yes, I'm Maria Yost. I want, uh, we want to welcome you to Ridge Church this morning. Gorgeous morning. And uh, to all the men in our church, we want to wish you a happy Father's Day. And also, we want to remind you, wear your mask when you go out and be safe. Good morning, Ridge family. Welcome to worship. Have a blessed day. Well, we've become accustomed to watching church in our jammies. We really miss seeing everyone every Sunday, and Benjamin especially misses donuts and singing in the people. We look forward to singing with you, seeing you, and eating donuts with you soon. So from our family to yours, have a wonderful Sunday and a happy Father's Day. Good morning, and welcome to Ridge United Methodist Church. I am Beth Ann Smolinski, the children and family pastor here at Ridge, and we are so excited to have you with us this morning. Praise the band is with me. Chrissy has joined us this morning, which is super exciting. Jen, we really do miss you, but Chrissy is very busy. I was happy to see her face. I have a few announcements that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, happy Father's Day, first of all, to all of the men in our lives that have stepped up to make a difference in the lives of the children and grandchildren and all of the, the children in the area. So thank you all for all that you do, and we hope that you have a very blessed Father's Day. Uh, as you saw when worship opened this morning, there are welcome videos that people submit um, to say good morning to you. And we would love to have as many people participate in that. Um, so if you are interested, uh, you are welcome to just send a video of a welcome to worship to either Karen's email or to my own, my, to my email. Um, and if for some reason you get a call, a text, or an email from me asking you to make a video, I really hope you say yes. So far, nobody has said no. So, pressure, just in case. So every week we have five or six videos, but if you're interested, we would love to have as many people to uh, participate. So send those videos in to us. Vacation Bible School is July 13th through July 17th. Registration runs through July 1st. This will be the first time that we actually have to cut off registration because we have to make the take-home kits and we have to know exactly how many that we need. If you have not registered for Vacation Bible School yet, there is a link on our website or on the Ridge Kid or Church uh, Facebook page that you can click on and it will get you uh, into the registration zone and you'll be able to register your children. Also, I heard from Kathy Giannini that she is in need of two Saturday lunches for the homeless shelter, July 18th and July 25th. She is looking for people to step up and prepare meals for the shelter. You do not have to serve the meals. Right now, they are just taking them in. You just have to drop it off at noon. So if you are interested, in doing that, reach out to Kathy Giannini or reach out to myself or Karen and let us know and we will make sure that uh, we let Kathy know. Uh, hopefully there is a couple people that are able to uh, cover those meals for the shelter. The last thing I have is the prayer stations are going to change tomorrow. So if you have been through the prayer stations and you're ready to come back through again, there will be more um, intentional prayers set up for you to pray for our community and some different things so I hope that you will come back through and check those out again they will be up and ready tomorrow morning by 9 and let's begin our worship together with some music and provide you with
Also, John and Monty Novak have been exposed to COVID, so they are going into quarantine for the next 14 days. Please keep John and Monty in your prayers, along with their friends that have been diagnosed with COVID. So keep them all in your prayers as well. I heard from Jared between the services that his grandfather passed away early this morning. So if you could keep Jared and Jared's dad and their entire family in your prayers as they mourn the loss of his grandfather today, he would really appreciate that. So as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning, let's sing together. without their fathers, and it's hard. 
Lord, be with them as they grieve. Help them to fill their days with sweet memory and love from you. Lord, we also realize that sometimes the name Father carries a dis difficult thing. For some are wounded and the cuts hurt and they're deep. We ask you for those who have been hurt to be healed. Lord, there's also those who long to be fathers. Help them to realize their potential. Let them feel your presence and let them know that what you have planned is far greater than anything they can imagine. Lord, we lift up in special prayers today the Shevchenko family for the loss of Dolores. We lift up Chris in her upcoming surgery. We lift up Monty and John and their friends. And we lift up the entire Kendall family on their loss of Grandpa. Lord, meet them where they are and tend to all of their needs. We ask for you to give us strength to hold on to you no matter what comes our way. Give us courage to wrestle honestly with the things we don't understand. To continually work out our salvation and to grapple daily with what it means to faithfully follow you. We are your people, chosen and named by you. Grant us your continued blessing and mark us with your love as we seek to live as your disciples in this world. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For you have striven with God 
and the payments and have fulfilled them. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and that my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and as he passed, Peniel weeping because of his hair. The word of God, the people of God. Good job, Lexi. I know those were a lot of verses. You did awesome. Let's pray. Holy and great God, thank you for this time of worship. We gather virtually this morning to hear the word that you have prepared for us. May I speak with conviction and grace. May those listening hear your voice and not mine. We prepare our hearts and minds, reorient our souls, and lift our eyes to you, our Father, who holds us all in his hands. Amen. So we continue today with our sermon series, The Church is the People. This morning, we are focusing on those who wrestle. Now, I'm not talking about chokeholds or half Nelsons or full Nelsons or Smackdowns. No, this type of wrestling is the only one thing that you do with God. Throughout our journey, we face trials and tribulations, and sometimes it just seems too much to handle. We, when faced with adversity, I admit, there are times where I throw in the towel. It's challenging to look past all of the difficulties to see the greater good on the other side. And for Jacob, he had fears and anxieties just like the rest of us. So our scriptures today focus on the wrestling match that Jacob has with God. But I think it's important for us to look at how Jacob has gotten to this point. So now you know Jacob is a twin to Esau, and they are the twin, the children, the sons of Isaac. And when Isaac was dying, he was almost blind, and it was time for him to share the blessing with Esau because Esau was actually older. Well, Jacob tricked Isaac, and he received the blessing instead of Esau. Well, Esau was enraged with what Jacob did, and Jacob had to flee. He couldn't stay where he was with his family. He had to go. And when Jacob left, his life was not easy. The trials and tribulations that Jacob had to face were beyond what most people could endure. But now God is calling Jacob and telling him that it's time for him to come home. Well, when he left, Esau was pretty angry. I doubt that Esau has gotten over that much anger. So Jacob decides to send out a messengers, and the messengers were to go to see what Esau was up to. Well, when they returned, they told Jacob that Esau was on his way to find him and had 400 men behind him. Well, that didn't sit very well with Jacob. I don't think it would have sat well with me. He was sure that Esau was coming to kill him. Jacob decides to send gifts and all of these things to Esau to help soften the blow for when they are re reunited. And then Jacob turns to God. He prays to God and asks him to fulfill all of the promises that God has promised to him and to Isaac and to Abraham. He is asking for his family to be delivered. He, is he wants God to ensure him that the promises that he laid out would come to fruition. And if you remember last week when we talked about Abraham and the promises that God gave to him, God never gives us a timeline, and he's certainly not going to let us tell him when he needs to fulfill those promises. Well, it seems that Jacob has forgotten how that works. So he prays, and he prays harder than he has ever prayed before. In fact, in Hosea 12, 4, it says that he wept for favor. He was crying out to God, begging him to fulfill those promises and show his saving grace. Now, even though Jacob is doing all of this praying, he is quite practical about the matter. He divides up his flock and his servants, sends the gifts out to Esau, and sets his family on the other side of the Jabbok River from him. That way, when Esau gets there, the first people he's going to see is Jacob's family. 
Well, with his wives and his children, how could you not soften your heart when you see little children? Jacob is hoping that this will help lower Esau's anger. So now Jacob is on his side of the river all by himself. And in the night, a man comes to wrestle with Jacob. Now, my th first thought about when I hear wrestling is two people going at it, entangled, one victorious, one pinned, fists flying, all of those things. Now, during this story, Jacob is already in his 70s. So I can't imagine that he would fare well in a wrestling match with a man. But see, this scuffle is not just a physical one. There is physicalness involved, but there is a large part that is spiritual as well. And the toll that it takes on Jacob is strenuous. But here's the thing. He doesn't quit. Have you ever been in a wrestling match with yourself? Late at night, you toss and turn, you argue with your thoughts, you get frustrated at the person that's looking back at you in the mirror. Yeah, because your best and worst opponent is yourself. And who knows you better than yourself? Oh, wait, God does. See, this is where Jacob is at. His emotions were all over the place. See, they're running high. He is fearful of what is to come at the hands of his brother. God has come to Jacob to help him work through all of the things that are swirling in his head. So this wrestling match goes on all night long. Jacob is relentless. He is not letting go without the blessing of God. See, because he needs this blessing more than anything he has ever needed before. And even though he was injured and his hip was whacked out of joint, he didn't give up. He persevered. It's not his strength that he used to wrestle. And it is not his strength that he prevailed with. God gave Jacob the strength he needed to win that match. The injury that he accrued didn't even matter to him. Jacob was victorious, and the victory was worth all of the pain. For when we are weak in ourselves, we are strong in God. 2 Corinthians 12, 10 says, Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. No matter what came Jacob's way, he knew that his own weakness meant nothing because of the strength he gained from God. He was not going to back down. He'd come too far in this battle. What good is it to wrestle all night and then walk away with nothing? No, he had to prevail. And because of God, he did. And as he lived the rest of his life, it reminded him of his tenacity to never, ever give up. Jacob was resilient, pursuant to acquire his blessing. Old, tired, injured, any one of us would have said, mm, I'm done, calling it quits. I know personally there have been times where I have given up, simply not having what is needed in me to change the way God asks. See, because the problem is, is that I was requiring myself to do all of this change on my own. And thinking for one second that I could do any of this change by myself pretty much shot it down before I even started. See, Jacob knew that he had to rely on God. God had to bless him so he could be victorious going through. How about you? Have you ever had a time when you felt that you just can't make this change by yourself and you quit? You have to remember that you're right. You can't make the change by yourself, but you can make the change relying on God and holding on to him. Daylight was not far away from Jacob, but he had to hold on. He could not let go. All of the things that were weighing on his mind with his brother and the tasks that were at hand simply had to wait. He could not be victorious in that journey without being victorious now. He needed that blessing. 
He had to know that God had forgiven him for all of his trespasses. And he had to believe that God knew he had the ability to do good. Jacob shows us that the fight is worth it. The strength to keep going when all perceived things in front of you are lost. We can model Jacob's tenacious fight. More than ever, we just cannot give up. Sometimes I know it's easier to quit. But love, my friends, is long-suffering. We have to change. We have to hold on during the rough parts so we can enjoy the good parts even more. Love is genuine and real, but it's not easy. In everything you love, it has to be worth the fight. That includes your relationship with God. When the world is falling apart around you, cling to Him. His grip is tighter than yours. I guarantee you, he will not let you fall. And as Jacob struggles and holds on tight, God does smile because Jacob is victorious. Now you may be wondering, why would God put it this way? Why was this how it played out for Jacob? God's surely strong enough to win against Jacob. The scripture says that Jacob's hip is injured with the slightest touch. It wasn't a whack or a blow that knocked out his hip. It was a simple touch that shows you the power and the strength that God has is far more than anything we could ever have. Yet Jacob was victorious. How is that possible? Because see, God planned it all. Remember, God initiated the contact with Jacob. Jacob wasn't on the other side of the river calling out to God. No, he was alone. And the man showed up. God began the wrestling for a purpose. He needed to discover Jacob's real dedication to God. You know, throughout the Bible, God tests people all the time to make sure that their commitment to him is true. Moses, Joseph, Peter, all of them went through some serious stuff and situations to prove their loyalty to God. God does this sometimes. He checks in with his children, making sure he has the right people in the right place to carry out the right plan that he has intended. And those plans span for generations. Remember, the promises given to Abraham and then Isaac and then to Jacob affected descendants for thousands of years. It's important that people are in the right place to make that happen. And all of us have been called by God to affect the generations to come. So of course he's going to check in and make sure that we're on the right path. And if we're not, he finds ways to get us back where we need to be. Now as Jacob began this transformation with his blessing, he became a force of goodness. His, he in his genuine, with his love and his loyalty to God. God was about to do a new thing in his life. Nothing was going to stop him. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever had a time where you have struggled for so long and fought for days and weeks and months, and finally, when you get to the other side, you almost feel invincible? I've had days like that. Not a lot of them, but I have. But when I think of invincibility, it reminds me of a child learning to tie their shoe. Think about it. They sit on the floor with their foot in front of them, and they're watching you, and you're showing them, and they're trying to do it. And then the bunny ears fall down, and then the tree falls apart, and then they push it through, and it comes all the way through, and all they have is a knot, and they are ready to quit. But see, they don't. They keep at it. Day after day after day, they tie that shoe over and over and over, and when they finally get it, and the shoe is tied and they're standing there and they look down at their feet and as they start to walk, I swear, they look like they're two inches taller because they fought through to the other side. And to them, it was just they learned how to tie their shoe. But it sets them up to learn how to get through the hard stuff and how you feel when you do get to the other side. I have a feeling that's a lot how Jacob felt. You know, we talked a lot last week about our individual calls and listening to the call of God like Abram did. But this week, we're focusing more on the pursuant 
of that call. Because remember, even though God called Abram, it did not make life a cakewalk for him. No, it was hard. And the same thing was for Jacob. The struggle was far from over. But because of the confidence he had gained through this wrestling match, he was able to withstand anything that came his way. He wrestled all night, and now he's recharged, ready to face Esau and anything else God put in front of him. Because he knew that he had God's blessing, and he was going to face it with him. Life was finally on an upswing, bad upswing for Jacob, all because he didn't let go. We can learn a lot from Jacob with all of our wrestling matches. We have to work hard. God's going to present challenges to us, and we have to show our dedication. Are we willing to fight? Will we wrestle with God and hold on when things get super tough? God's not going to pave the way, but he will be there every step of the way. See, that's the key. Even though it's not easy, he's right next to us, walking with us. And when we stumble, he's the one that says, nope, that's okay, I got you. And you keep going. We have to put in the work. We have to handle the disappointments. The frustration, the aggravation, the anger, and even the tears. But I guarantee you that you're not facing any of those things alone. God's right there. When we never let go of God, God is pleased. And the blessings start to flow. Now this does not mean that we get our way. See, because there's going to be times where you're fighting and wrestling and you're sure of what you need and you are battling, trying to get it. And then God comes in and says, wait, I have a better plan for you. And we have to be okay with that. So when these areas come up and their struggles start to come up and you're wrestling with God, ask for his will to be done first. Pray, say, God, this is hard, but I'm looking to you to show me what I need. Don't say, I know what I need. Ask God. And all through the scout's struggle, keep remembering to tell God how much you need his help. I'm wrestling with this right now, Lord, but I need you to show me what it is that I need. That is how you prevail in those wrestling matches. Going through hardship, God helps us to discern what is best. Pray without ceasing. Remember? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. As we fight for God to hear us and to see us in our struggles, keep this verse in mind. Continue to rejoice about all of the things on this journey that you're on. Pray for guidance and God's will and give thanks for God's presence because I guarantee you, you can do it. And see, Jacob, not only did he receive this blessing from God, he got a new name. Because of his true bravery, the angel deems him worthy the name Israel. That means prince with God. Now, the name Jacob means to follow or to be behind. And see, that no longer suits Jacob because he won that battle. He is worth the name that puts him in the forefront of his destiny. Jacob, who is now Israel, now knows that he has found great favor with God. And glory coming to him is because of God. Jacob knows and admits that none of this, any of it, would be possible without God. And he models that for the generations to come. Remember the Israelites? Even though they messed up all over the place, God was still right there. And they still kept going. And they still kept following. And they still kept believing and they got where they needed to go because God was right there. Jacob's glory and honor and power with God also gives him power among men. Think about it. A blessing from heaven is far more powerful. And that allows Jacob to rule the nations on high. He confronts his brother, but it turns out it's not a confrontation at all. For Esau ran to him in Genesis 33, 4, 
ran to meet him, embraced him, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. That was not what Jacob had thought was coming. But it didn't matter what he thought, because he was ready. See, now Jacob's new life is beginning. He's got new plans, thanks to God. He is rooted in God's trust. Right now, our world hurts for lots of reasons. And some days, we want to just forget it all. We want to turn away, look inward on what we need. We just don't want to fight anymore. That's when we use the strength of our predecessors to keep going. Look at the Old Testament. Find out how all of them made it through adversity and not just survived it, but they thrived through it. Re research in the Gospels and look for Jesus. Find out what did he do? What did he teach? What did he suggest when things are hard? Did he say, turn away? No. Turn to me. Follow me. And that's all that you have to do. And above all, hold tight to God and God alone. Don't ever let go. See, now, this part isn't really written down. But I felt that this was important to share with you. This time for a lot of people has been really difficult because their way of life has been uprooted and changed. And for my family, the change that we needed came with this pandemic. See, because a lot of the days we just went through the motions. We got up, we went to work, we came home, we did this. I had worship, I had Sunday school, this, this, this. Everything needed to get done in order. Everybody had to be in their place and everything had a place. Everything was in control. I was in control. And then this happened. And all of that control went out the window. I had no say. It wasn't up to me anymore. And that was hard. That was one of the hardest things I've ever faced in my life. And this pandemic has taken all of that away. And now I don't have to be in control. I don't have to be the one who makes the decision. See, because I am not supposed to. I now give God that control. And without everything that we've gone through the last three months, I can't tell you where my family would have ended up. But I know that we are in a better place now because God said enough. God said enough. You need to hear what I have planned for you. And if you're not going to listen, I'm going to show you how to listen. Now everybody has gone through this pandemic in different ways. But for my family, we were saved. We have a new outlook in our life because we allowed this to not break us. We allow now to not take away our hope. The struggle is real. The struggle is hard and we wrestle with God every single day. But I guarantee you, if you allow him to be the one that leads, things will get better. But you have to be able to say, I don't want to be in control anymore. And sometimes it's hard. And I still struggle every day. But I know at the end of the day, he smiles and says, good job. You can do it. Keep going. And I believe that for all of you as well. So as we go through and think, well, we're the church. We're the people of the church. We make the church. How does this struggle work for us? Well, we've had to struggle. We don't get to be together. We have to see each other through screens or through windows or through doors. But we're still a family. We're still a church. We're still the people of God who are doing everything that we can to share his good news. It's not easy, 
Because we can't hug and embrace and let people feel God's love come off of us. So we got to do it new ways. we got to think of different things that we can do. But that's that push. Do you feel God's challenge for us? It's almost like he's like, let's see how much you're willing to work to be a disciple. He's placed that challenge in front of us. He's checking on us. Are we strong enough? Are we resilient? Do we have the tenacity that Jacob had to not let go? You know, he just wants us to be our best. And he's going to push us. And he's going to challenge us to stand up and tell the world and show the world exactly what it is that we need. And you know what we need? We need God. God of might and mercy, you see through the good and the bad. You walk beside us in our storms and carry us when we are weak. Nothing is impossible with you by our side. Lord, for you are the most powerful and the most gentle. Your strength and love go unmatched. We worship you and praise you for all you are and who you are and how you are, now and forevermore. Amen. Now I invite you to join us for our closing song.
proclaim to anyone that you meet that God loves them, he's with you, he never leaves you, and every promise that he keeps, he gives, he keeps. Now go, be the church, share the good news with all who will hear. Amen. Our God is